double bang go gang man it's dark outside tried to catch you before the sun went down wasn't able to do it though but you know it's my favorite time of night man i'm actually a a fall baby man an autumn baby i love the autumn fall is my favorite i love when it's daylight savings when you turn the clocks back and they get dark around 5 36 o'clock you know how that go man what <laughs> Shout out to my guy, man, Double Law. Me and Retro Rob had a convo earlier. Man, shout out to the bro. I love everything he's doing, man. Life is chess. That's just what it is, man. So, uh, yeah, speaking of Double Law, man, you know how I feel about the dog. <laughs> yeah, every time the sun go down, that's... X was my theme music. I, I bumped X before every single football game, yo. It's so many, it's so many X lyrics that it's just, it's the same, man. Double R when we get down for life. Let it you know it could go down tonight. From the top of our head, the tips of our toes. What? We untouchable. Yeah, you're too young for that. Stay out the dark. Because if I get you when the sun is down, run a clamp, come up off that. I'm going to gun it down. Who won it now? However it's going to go, it's going to be that. You see that? This, here, finish you, dog. Believe that. Where we at? Do you value your life as much as your possessions? Don't be a stupid. Learn the lesson. Let me get you either way. And it's better to live. Get me some new socks and it's better to give than receive. Believe what I say when I tell you. Make me take you somewhere where nobody can smell you. So when the lights is out, they don't come back on. This ain't no flick. You ain't gonna come back on. You ain't that strong. Knew it was wrong, but he asked for it, baby. Use a fake ski mask for it, baby. <laughs> yeah, yup. Breathe in, now breathe out. Hands up, now hands down. Back up, back up. Tell me what you're gonna do. Keep rolling, rolling. It just don't get no darker than a kid with a parka. Bald head with the boots who shoots and make you spark. Now I'm a fair nigga, but ain't bad nigga. Then a hair trigger. Don't you dare. Nigga. Be like your man, trying to hold your brains in your head, but you'll be knowing yourself because you already dead. Then at the funeral, you won't need a casket. I'm leaving just enough for them to stuff in a basket. A tisket, a tasket. I really need my skit. My mom's never let me forget that I'm a ass and ain't never been. And ain't gonna be what? That's why I take what whenever I see what and it's that D, D, D short for do what I want to do. And that's what I'm going to do right here in front of you. And I'll be running you and your man straight about while you niggas ain't running the thing but your mouth. <laughs> Got me wanting to go flip a car or something, man. Yeah. Good dog. Yeah. 98, man. That was a good year. That was a real good year. Word up. Hit my growth spurt around that time after the dog came out. And I remember me and my god brother, man, Kashin. He, uh, my uncle Juan, it's my godfather. He bought Kashin uh, an Olympic weight set. So we spent that summer. I used to spend half the summer at my, uh, my godparents' crib. And then the other half would be at my parents' crib. But we spent that half at his crib hitting the weights. I came back the summer after uh, sophomore year, and I had grown like seven inches, and I was hitting the weights. Yeah, I was turning heads. I went from five, five, one and a half, five two to five nine, five nine and a half. So yeah, that was a good one, man. See, it was Brenda, Letitia, Linda, Felicia, Dawn, Lashawn, Inez, and Alicia. Teresa, Monica, Sharon, Nikki, Lisa, Veronica, Cameron, Vicky, Cookie. I met her in the ice cream parlor. Tanya, Diane, Lori, and Carla. Marina, Katrina, Selena, Sabrina. About three Kims, Latoya, and Tina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dog, man. We need the dog back, yo. Like, back, back. It's, uh... Definitely a blessing that he got out. He was doing time for, uh, like like they did Al Capone, man. They got him for tax evasion. 
and they sat him down for a little bit. But uh, yeah, I hope the dog is well. I'm looking forward to any type of uh, Rough Riders reunion. I wasn't able to make the last tour. I wanted to get out there. The date that I was gonna go to, they they actually, uh, that's when X got locked up. So, man, I love the Rough Riders, yo. We used to get in debates when I was in college, because that was in like the heat of, that was the middle of the Rockefeller versus Rough Riders, State Prop versus D-Block. That was in the middle of that. And I went to school in Philly, so you know, a lot of, a lot of my, friends teammates classmates roommates all of that you know a lot of them from the area of course they was uh they was running with state prop you know that's the home team but you know lox always got love in philly so yeah those debates were always fun we will spend our entire like lunch hour just going back and forth about nas versus jay and what the heck that? see this is why I don't watch scary movies, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all can't see over there, but that's woods over there, man. And, and and I just heard some noises that I don't really like. So if I would have seen a scary movie, I would have turned this off ASAP and I would have hit the dip. Yeah, that's what I get for trying to record at night, man. That's exactly what I get. How much darker must it get? How much harder must it hit? See if your hardest is flip when I start a bunch of, yeah. I like, but not up in my face. So give me three feet where we creep. No more than three deep. <laughs> See sheep. Bloodhounds found you buried in the mud, followed by traces of gunpowder, residue, and blood. Pages of ideas impossible. So you know, John Doe's. What they gonna be putting on that tag on your toe? Who gonna tell your mother her baby's under recover in the morgue? Stiff as a log, sniffed out by the dogs. And never hard headed, they wouldn't listen. So he got what he came for. Stat. Surgery with the chainsaw. <sighs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I talked about when I was talking to, uh, to Double R earlier, man. Retro. I was talking about how uh, what Kiss was saying, right? When Kiss was talking about how for two fifty, head hop in the ring and kill anything in, kill anybody on the roster, URL, KOTD, whatever. He said, get whoever. He said for seven fifty, man, the locks, all of us, maybe. Me, P, and Looch, we'll kill all of them. Line them all up. So just thinking about that. And then uh, that just made me want to ask a question because, you know, I was also talking about how, where the, where the battle rap game is right now. Brothers get points for absolutely nothing. Like, quote, unquote, disrespect. They get points for personals, uh, disrespect. And that alone, you shouldn't get points for that. Saying something disrespectful in and of itself is not something that's worthy of points. If it's, a, if it's done in a creative way or lyrical or, or you know, bar heavy, that's different. But just the fact, oh, oh, he said that he'll punt his son like a football. Like, oh, you get points for that. Oh, oh, man, he said his baby mom's he dealt with his brother. Oh, but if that's it, it's like, man. So, uh. You know, and, and, and the brothers who, the rappers who disrespect like that, they want points because they feel like, yo, I disrespected him. And, you know, as a man, and as a man, if, if he was a man, a real man, he'd have, he'd have checked me or he, or he would address me. So I put both of those together, for instance, uh, because, you know, Looch, Looch was saying he don't know if he would be able to, to do like battle rap in the current format. Cause it's not getting in the ring and just seeing who got the best rhymes or who's the most talented or who's the best rapper. It's all that extra stuff. So he was saying, man, all the people spitting in your face and you know, people saying and touching you and all of that, I'm not with that. So what that made me think about was, okay, so let's say Smack B's, D Chico and Norbs made that happen, right? Where they gave the locks a mil, 750 or a mil or whatever they was asking for and, and, and had them battling people on the URL roster. Now we know what the what these brothers say to each other all day every day. They talk about their kids, they talk about their parents, they talk about lost loved ones and all of that. So my thing is, okay, so to all of the ones who major in disrespect and who always get points for that, if if LOX is on a card, right, and they battling these rappers 
for instance, somebody like Sheik Luch. Unfortunately, Luch lost his mother to cancer, yo. And stuff like that is real sad to me. I don't, I don't like playing games like that where you talk bad about people's lost loved ones or, you know, pee, kiss. Them brothers lost people very, very close to them in very tragic ways, man. So, how many of y'all think that any of the rappers on the roster, the most disrespectful and all of that, how many of them do you think would cross LOX like that and bring that up the way that they would their own peers? The brothers that they battle all the time. Because they major in disrespect. That's what it is. That's what they're trying to prove. Oh, I'm so hard that I'll say this to anybody. Ah, oh, blah, blah, blah. So how many, who do you think will have the testicular fortitude to say something about Lucha's mother passing away, who passed from cancer, the way that they do each other, or any of the of the people that, that P lost, or Kiss lost, or any of the things that they've gone through. How many of them would get personal with those brothers? Y'all can't see because I'm super black right now, but I'm holding up a donut, zero. None of them would do that. None of them would cross them. They only do that stuff and get it off with people that they feel like they can get it off with. That's what I was saying about goods and gems. That's what made it whack to me was that he ain't pulled that car with nobody else. Nobody else. Then he came with a whack excuse. Oh, cause I'm not gonna let him off the hook. Nah, bro, you gotta stand it where your standard is. Nobody talks about your daughter. You will never let, you will never let her see another man say nothing disrespectful about her or say anything about her period to your face. That's what he told his daughter. That's the promise he made her. Did he hold to that? Nope. Nope. And he said he wasn't going to before the battle. Yeah, now nah, see, because I have found out that, you know, he was going to do that. So I had a conversation with my daughter. Well, if you could have a conversation with her and explain to her, look, honey, this is just battle rap, man. This is what these people do is they, they try to say the worst, most disrespectful stuff. So if you could have that conversation with her in this context, in this context, what about the other battles? You know what I mean? See, see, that's what I'm saying. What about the other? You, you couldn't have that same conversation with her? Baby, it's not personal. It's what these people do. It's what we do. This is what I signed up for. You couldn't have that conversation before that? See? But it's just, these brothers are just so selective with, with who they do things with. And y'all know I definitely, I run with the Jersey Spitters, man. I run with the Jersey Battlers. I love those brothers. O-Red is one of my favorites ever all time and O-Red at his best he's one of those dudes where I say when he's at his best you put him in there with anybody I don't care who you name put him in there and O-Red is coming out of it so now, am I saying he's going to come out the victor 100% of the time over anybody nah what I'm saying is he ain't coming out with no loss at the very worst it's going to be a classic so you know how I feel about the, the Jersey Spitters arse I'll never have a bad word to say about us, not just because of what he accomplished in the ring or on the stage, but what he did for New Jersey Battle Rap. Same thing with Sirius Jones, what he did for New Jersey Battle Rap. He put us on the map in a way that nobody had done it before. So brothers like that always got my respect. So, But I got to call a spade a spade. So that was my beef with Shotgun Shove when he, uh, when he started with the pocket taps and all of that which that's cool that's entertainment i like that that's i appreciate that but number one it's not as effective as it would have been 15 years ago when you remember when they had to uh battles used to be set up where with like a pool table between them brothers a big table because people ain't play that spitting in your face and touching you and all that type of stuff so the element of danger was always there in the beginning so tapping the dude's pockets was that was something but then it got to the point where Battle Rap became the WWF, so it kind of lost its effect. Where there's no element of danger. When, when Shotgun Shook taps somebody's pockets, there's no element of danger because ain't nobody going to do nothing about it. But then there were a, a few people that let it be known, nah, this dude, nah, don't, don't touch my pockets. You do. I know what you do to these people, and I know it's all rap, and I know it's all battle with them, but just you know, just know that when it comes to me, nobody t taps my pockets. I don't allow that, battle rap or not. And with those type of people, Suge wasn't touching nobody's pockets. Like, and that's what what I didn't like. Like, come on, bro, don't be selective. If you if you a hitter like that, man, if you a, a real G like that, it don't matter. You're not selective with nothing. I'll do whatever I want. 
So, and it would have been one thing if he was tapping pockets and then it got to the point where he's battling somebody like a head ice or a slave. And, uh, and cause it was one time where he had an excuse the first time that he didn't tap the person's pockets and it was somebody of stature and it was somebody who let it be known. Nah, I don't play like that. So he didn't tap pockets. So after the battle, Suge was saying, yeah, nah, man, like the, the pocket tap, it kind of lost, kind of lost its edge a little bit. So, and, and had me thinking and other people thinking, all right, so the pocket tap is dead now. But then he comes back and he battles somebody else and he taps their pockets. And it's like, wait, bro, I thought you buried that. Then once again, he battles somebody like a hitman and ain't touching. And then he comes to the following battle and drops a bar talking about, yeah, well, you know, them MTV dudes be lawyered up. And, you know, that, that got a chuckle and that was fine. But come on, man, let's let's really talk about what it really is, bro. You can't be selective with that, man. You can't be selective with it. That's your whole thing is you the bully, right? You the bully. Nobody can, you big and don't, can't nobody do nothing with you. And you clicked up and you clipped up and all of that. So you got to stand on that, man, no matter who's involved. And that's when you selective. I, I can't respect when it's selective like that. Same thing with Surf. He ain't tapped Surf pockets, but then he did the quote unquote heart check. Then I thought Surf flipped that and and it made sense. It made sense because the pattern was already established. And certain people whose pockets sure ain't touching. So uh, he said a heart check, man, please. That's his own logic for why he couldn't tap my mother effing pockets. Like, that's what it was. So, uh, yeah, man, so that's how I felt about, you know, the goofy, the, the poop I do. I'ma just cook him every every time I feel like it, man. Ain't, ain't no hoes barred. He just, you know, some people, you gotta just knock them down a little bit, knock them down to the level that they that they at. But yeah, so he was real selective with, the, with what he did with gyms. That was real corny. It was super corny because during the promo, that's what he did. The dude who set gyms up in the first place. Goods went, he's sitting on the block with him, you know, sipping his handy and hanging out and, you know, they playing thumb wrestling and, and, and talking about gyms all crazy and how soft gyms is and he doing an investigation. Oh, he's not even really Hispanic, he's Greek and all of that type of stuff. So the whole promo, all of the blogs and everything was good. It's talking about how Jim's is somebody who you can get that kind of stuff off with. So the battle happens and Goods steals off on the dude 100% simply because of the fact that he knew going into it, this is somebody I can get that off with. But when you're selective, I can't respect that. I just can't. I just can't. And then like I was saying in my first Goods video, how do you get a clean shot on the dude and you don't put him all the way out and I'm not that big of a dude yo I'm a little bit short of six feet right now I'm about 181 pounds just weighed myself earlier body fat percentage is low though but but still I'm 181 I'm about 5'10 and a half 181 and if I touch somebody's chin anybody less than 250 pounds bro it's nobody under that that ain't gonna see three of me at least but somebody that's gym size, if I catch him and he don't know I'm swinging, it's over, bro. He turning into smoke. Like, he, he's disappearing for life. Done. He'll never rap again. Like, his jaw is, is, is out of there. Turn his jaw into gravel with a clean shot. You serious? You couldn't put him out? You couldn't even put him down? Like, what is that, bro? What is that? So my whole thing is, with people like Goods, they're very selective. So that's what I was saying, man. Like like I said, man, we all know. And with people like LOX, with Deep Block, with, with Kiss, Looch, and P, their, their lives are public. They're public figures, you know what I'm saying? So we know, the masters know that, uh, unfortunately, man, Looch lost his mother to cancer. P lost his brother years and years and years ago. God rest the dead, man. I'm praying. I've been praying for P for a long time. You know, the, the amount of strength that it takes for that brother to be able to continue on the course that he's on, when a lot of people would have given up. He lost his blood, his brother, like his blood brother. I have one brother and three sisters. I don't know what I would do if I lost any of them. You know how bad that would 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 just hurt and haunt me. Then he had to bury a child. No parent wants to ever bury a child. That's like the 
the, the worst pain in the universe. You can't even imagine it if you didn't personally go through it. That's a fact. But in battle rap, URL, Queen of the Ring, people will, will really get on stage and to win a battle, they'll bring that type of stuff up. And they'll talk about your dead relatives and everything. So the question is, okay, you, you, you would do that to such and such, or you did that to such and such. If, if URL makes that locks verse URL thing happen, how many of y'all have the heart to say those things, to talk about the lost loved ones of Looch, P, and Kiss? How many of y'all would do that? And the answer is zero. None of them have the heart or the testicular fortitude to do that. So, which, that's not a problem, because first of all, they shouldn't be doing that to anybody. For a rap battle? No, man. Not for a rap battle. 